Hello everyone, welcome again to my channel on Silver Screen, where learning is interesting. This is your host, Silver De La Rosa, and today we start with our season two. And in this episode, we will be getting to know what is procurement and tendering. The first part of the series of videos that I will be presenting for this season will deal with procurement, and the later part of the series of videos will deal with tendering. Now, if you've been following me for the couple of videos that I've presented and you found it useful, please hit like on these videos and you can also share the videos to your friends, especially those who are preparing for their APC. And if you haven't done yet, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified once a new video is uploaded. In this video, we are going to differentiate procurement from tendering because oftentimes these two terms are being used interchangeably without giving thought on the actual meaning of these terms. We will also talk about the procurement strategy and the competing factors that may affect the development of procurement strategy. We will tackle the role of quantity surveyors as well as the considerations in selecting a procurement strategy. We will also talk a little bit about risks and the different procurement routes. Let us begin by defining what is procurement. Procurement is the overall act of obtaining goods and services from external sources and includes deciding the strategy on how those goods are to be acquired by reviewing the client's requirements and their attitude to risk or their client's risk appetite. While tendering is an important phase in procurement strategy, which involves the implementation of the chosen procurement route, obtaining price, through bidding process and appointment of selected contractor. So you see, tendering is only part of the procurement process. While procurement is the overall process of obtaining the goods, it may start from analysis of your client's requirement, analysis of their risk appetite, preparation of your procurement strategy, tendering process, all the way up to the delivery of goods or completion of the project for which you procured your contractor. That is why do not interchange these two terms because they mean differently. Now we have another term here, procurement strategy. What is procurement strategy? Procurement strategy is the process of identifying the best way to complete a project, taking into account the best value for money over the entire life cycle of the building or facility while achieving the optimum balance between competing factors. Again, what are these competing factors? These competing factors are the cost, time, and quality. When we analyze the factors that will affect cost, we don't only take a look at the total cost of the project, but we have also to take a look at whether the funds are available or when will the funds be available? Does the capital cost strike a balance with an operational cost or the capital cost will be the primary factor to the organization? So these are only few things that we have to consider when we analyze the cost as a competing factor. When we analyze time as a competing factor, we have to know when will be the desired completion date of the project or are there any interim milestones that needs to be completed at certain point of time? We also need to know whether there is an absolute last delivery date required by the client. This means that a project may deem to be useless or will not be able to satisfy its purpose to the organization once you fail to deliver the project at this particular point of time. So that is a very important factor. Now let's talk about quality. It is not only the aesthetic of the project that needs to be considered but also you need to consider the performance of the completed project, the design of the project, and the functionality of the project. Other factors that needs to be considered are risk. Risk is a very important factor and it is inherent to all the competing factors. We need to know how the client will react to the associated risk or what is the client's risk appetite. We will talk more about risk and how to handle risk in our future video about risk management. Please watch out for that. The next factor is type and complexity of the project. For example, a simple factory 
on a green field will have a different consideration compared to a building at a city center. So the type and complexity of the project will also affect on how you're going to develop your procurement strategy. These are the factors that needs to be considered in developing your procurement strategy. Now, as a quantity surveyor, you may ask, what is my role at this early stage of the project? The quantity surveyor plays an important role at this stage because the QS will help identify and assist the client in the prioritization of primary objectives. The client may have different objectives or several objectives in his mind. So as a quantity surveyor, you will help the client prioritize which objective comes first. Next is that you will help identify the client's attitude towards associated risk. Understand how much the client wishes to spend or what will be the cost limit and understand the required quality output that the client is seeking to achieve. You will also understand the required timeline and assist the client to formulate the project brief in some instances. Most importantly, you will advise and guide the client on the most appropriate procurement route or procurement strategy to be implemented. The following are the considerations in developing a procurement strategy. First is an objective assessment of the client's needs and project characteristics through identification of the primary objectives of the client. And once these objectives have been identified along with associated risks, this risk should be clearly defined and apportioned. Another important factor to consider is who will bear the design responsibility, as this will greatly influence the selection of your procurement route. Next is that the assessment of these objectives must be based upon the business case for the project and should identify the relative importance of key elements. And these key elements again are the performance or quality, price, and time or schedule. After the objectives have been identified and assessed, it is time now to look for best fit solution. And careful consideration must be afforded in selecting a solution because most often, the most obvious solution is not always the best. And in order to look for the best fit solution, a quantity surveyor must ensure that the client makes an informed decision. And the QS must provide a sound advice by giving due regard to the identified criteria and acceptable distribution of risks. Now, in selecting this best fit solution comes with the following components. First is the analysis or the identification of the relative importance of the client's primary objectives and the extent of client's attitude towards associated risk. The second component is the choice or the consideration of possible procurement options and selection of the route that provides best fit with the analysis. To demonstrate, let us go back to the competing factors which are time, cost, and quality. And let's say that this green target is the client's attitude towards these competing factors. If the result of analysis shows that the client gives more emphasis to cost alone, it will be noted that longer time may be needed to complete the project and the project may move farther away from its intended quality. If equal emphasis is given to cost and quality, it will also be noted that longer time may be needed to complete the project. Similarly, if equal emphasis is given to time and quality, the client may need to incur more cost in order to satisfy or achieve the objective of its organization. So once the location of this target is determined based on the analysis of the client's attitude towards these mutually exclusive factors, the procurement route can now be selected. Before we proceed with the selection of procurement route, let us talk a little bit more about risks. Risks are uncertain event or circumstance that, if it occurs, will affect the outcome of a program or project in both positive and negative manner. So you see, risks are not all threats. There are also opportunities in risk if you explore the risk properly. And risk may appear in a number of different ways, and it may occur at any point of the life of the project, and many of which are outside the control of the client. Risks can come from the following sources, political or economic change, legislative change, environmental influences, social or technological change, 
competitive influences, and risks inherent in construction process. And these risks may be categorized as strategic risks, external risks, project risk, and discovery risk. We will talk more on risk in our future video about risks management. Now that we knew how to develop the procurement strategy and the source of associated risks for each competing factor, let us now discuss procurement truth. Procurement truth are the methods of project delivery which identifies the extent of responsibility of each party in a construction project. Be reminded that it is important to identify and analyze all factors affecting the project and the associated risks before you select your procurement truth. Let us again visit our competing factors which are time, cost, and quality. Usually, cost will be of utmost importance to the client because before the organization will make an investment decision, they must see to it that the benefit will outweigh the resource input. And the difference between the benefit and the resource input will be the added value to the organization. In some instances, time will also be of utmost importance when the financial outcome may only be achieved in full if the project commences the delivery of its benefits in line with a particular time scale. And quality may have more importance than time or even cost when the project will be used for a long period and serves a very specific purpose. So that is why you have to balance this time, cost, and quality factors. Now, there are different procurement routes to choose from, and these procurement routes may differ from each other in relation to the client's exposure to financial uncertainty, the degree of control that the client has over the design and construction process, the extent of design information at the time of tender, the information required at the time that the construction work can commence, extent of involvement by the contractor and the supply chain in the design stage, when these parties may be able to contribute to the design and planning of the project. Organizational arrangement that distribute risk, responsibility, and accountability, and the sequential character of the process. Now, the different procurement routes are traditional, that is either lump sum or remeasurement, which is also known as measure and value. Traditional procurement route gives more emphasis to cost and quality. The next is design and build and public-private partnership or PPP. These procurement routes gives more emphasis to cost and time. What the procurement route that gives emphasis to time and quality are construction management and management contracting. Join me next on Silver Screen as we discuss in detail the different procurement routes. Please support this channel by hitting like and sharing the video to your friends. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified once a new video is uploaded. Thank you for watching and see you next episode.